Hello, my name is Laura, and I work here at the library. I don't think I recognize you. You're new to the area. Well, welcome. How have you been settling in? Oh, that's so good to hear. Well, you're here at the library today, so I'm guessing you're in need of some books. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Well, because you are a new resident here at the area, I am going to have to make you a library card, okay? Okay. Making a library card is pretty straightforward. I'm just going to need a few details from you. Is that okay? Okay. So let's begin with your first name. Okay. And your last name. And can I get your current address? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and can I get your date of birth? Okay. And I'm going to need a photo ID. We take a driver's license, school ID, employer ID, passport. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that works. That's all the information that I need for your library card. So I'm just going to set that up for you now and then give you your brand new library card. Okay, so if you look at the screen in front of you now, it's now going to ask you to enter a password. We have an online system where you can reserve books and pick them up at any one of our local libraries. So you can use the online system to reserve them at your leisure. Okay, so if you want to enter the password you're comfortable using. Okay. Okay, perfect. So that confirms your library card. So I'm just going to give you that now. Okay, and you just hold on to that. The only information that you need is the password that you're using and your account number that's at the top there. Okay, perfect. So you can feel free to use our services anytime during the day from 8am to 5pm. You can also pick up your books, DVDs, Blu-rays, things like that during that time slot too. You will also have access to our computers, fax, scanners, printers, things of that nature, and you can access our Wi-Fi whenever you please during those hours. Okay. So you can feel free to reserve and bring home as many books as you like and all we ask is that you return them within a 60 day period and if you're late at all just let us know, there's no fee at all here, just let us know if you'll be late with returning the books, okay? Okay, great. You can also feel free to reserve and bring home a few DVDs and Blu-rays, should you find any of interest at any of our local libraries. Great. So, you are here for some books. How can I help you with that? I see. Okay. So you haven't read a lot of the classics and you'd like to explore some of those. Okay, well you are actually in luck because this month our library is celebrating all of the classic books from 1923 upwards. We're actually focusing predominantly on Time Magazine's 100 Best English Language Novels from 1923 to 2005 this month, so you will definitely be in some luck for finding a book to suit your needs. 
So tell me a little bit more about genres that interest you. Have you read many books? Okay, so you've been out of reading for a little while and you're wanting to explore a few types of genres. Okay. Okay. Sci-fi, dystopian, classics. Okay, wonderful. Okay. Just give me one second and have a look. Which out of the books we have this month that would suit that? So I think this one will. This one will. This one will. Are you okay with sensitive subjects? Emotional subjects, things like that. Okay. Uh, a lot of classics on Time Magazine's 100 Best English Language Novels tend to have quite a few um, serious topics, so I wanted to ask beforehand because sometimes you can dive into some really heavy books. Hmm, not this one. Okay, so I'm pretty confident with these. So if you want, we can have a look at these books. I have one, two, three, four, five books to have a look at today and I'll tell you a little bit about them, no spoilers of course, and if the plot or the book sounds interesting to you, you can take it home. Okay, so let's have a look here, I'll just move some books out of the way. Take a seat, relax, get comfortable. Do you have time today? Okay, all right, so let's start with this one. So this is a wonderful classic. This is Lord of the Flies by William Golding. William Golding is a Nobel Prize winning author and this is actually his debut novel that was released in 1954. So I will read to you on the back what it says about the book. At the dawn of the next world war, a plane crashes on an uncharted island, stranding a group of schoolboys. At first, with no adult supervision, their freedom is something to celebrate. This far from civilization, they can do anything they want. Anything. But as, other order, but as order collapses, as strange howls echo in the night, as terror begins its reign, the hope or adventure seems as far removed from reality as the hope of being rescued. So this is a very interesting read. This is recommended for ages 13 and up and is typically taught in schools at grades 10 and 11 in the United States. This is a fairly moderate to short read. This is 208 pages. I actually have some notes here for our book group discussion, so I'll relay those to you. Maybe they'll entice you into the book. So this has been interpreted three times into different movies, and in 2005 it was credited on a Time Magazine's 100 Best English Language Novels released since 1923 and it ranked third in the UK's favourite books from school. And in 2019, BBC News listed Lord of the Flies on its list of the 100 most influential novels. This is a really good, interesting read, and is a classic that I think mostly everybody should read if this is something that interests them. So it was written because Holding read R.M. Ballantyne's The Coral Island, A Tale of the Pacific Ocean, and Golding believed that children's behaviour in that book was perceived wrongfully. Um, this book was also originally t titled Strangers From Within, but the title was shunned by an in-house reader and London book publishers Faber and Faber. As of 2015, this has sold over 10 million copies and has inspired three movies in the years 1963, 1975, and 1990, and it has also been adapted for the stage 
and debuted at the Royal Shakespeare Company in 1996. So this is an extremely popular read. So if that is a type of book that interests you, you can feel free to take this home today. What do you think? Sounds good? Excellent. I really think you'll enjoy this one. I think this is a nice introductory piece to um, classic literature from the 20th century. So now let's move on to another book that I think you will like. So the next one I think you might be interested in, we'll see, is this one. Now you might have heard of the 1971 movie by Stanley Kubrick, A Clockwork Orange. It is in fact based off of a novel by Anthony Burgess. Have you heard of A Clockwork Orange? Yeah, it's an extremely popular book and an extremely popular movie. So the theme of this one is dystopian dark comedy. It does contain quite brutal themes, um, particularly focusing on violence and, uh, let's say, mental disturbances. Um, so it does touch on some quite heavy, intense topics in this book as a little bit of a pre-warning if those types of topics um, don't um, interest you. So um, this one was famously adapted into the movie by Stanley Kubrick in 1971. Uh, it's set in a dismal dystopian England and gives a first-person account of a teenager, Alex, who receives state-sponsored psychological rehabilitation for his behaviour. It uses futuristic slang that was invented by the author Burgess, and the slang was actually inspired by the Russian language. So I'm going to read to you the back of this book. A vicious 15-year-old Droog, Droog is slang that is explained in the book, is the central character of this 1963 classic. In Anthony Burgess's nightmare vision of the future, where the criminals take over after dark, the story is told by the central character Alex, who talks in a brutal invented slang that brilliantly renders his and his friends social pathology. A Clockwork Orange is a frightening fable about good and evil, and the meaning of human freedom. And when the state undertakes to reform Alex to redeem him, the novel asks, at what cost? This edition includes the controversial last chapter not published in the first edition, and Burgess's introduction, A Clockwork Orange, resucked. Anthony Burgess is the author of many works, including The Long Day Wanes, The Wanting Seed, The Doctor is Sick, Nothing Like the Sun, Honey for the Bears, and Rejoice, all available from Norton. So that's perhaps where this book originated from. So I think that summarises the book extremely well. Like Lord of the Flies, A Clockwork Orange was also featured on Time Magazine's Best 100 English Language Books from 1923 to 2005. So this is also most certainly a classic. This book has received mixed reviews for its themes in the book. Some note its use of violence and language as a negative, and others believe it raises important ethical questions, such as the suppression of free will and the choice between being a good or bad person. The book initially had fair success, but after the 1971 release of the movie adaptation of the book, the sales of this book skyrocketed. So as you may have heard from me reading from the back, there is actually two versions of the final chapter of this book, and of course I will not spoil it for you, but I believe that the final chapter was adapted for American publishers. Don't quote me on that, I might be wrong, 
but I think that might be the case. And I think the movie followed the same adaptation. But this one includes the authentic, original, final chapter. So it's certainly one that I would encourage reading as this to begin with. How's this sound? Sounds good? Great. Are you interested in any more books? Okay. Oh, just to let you know, uh, this book has just over 200 pages, just like Lord of the Flies. So how is the theme sounding so far? Are you enjoying the sounds of these sorts of books? Okay, then I'll keep suggesting some books that are similar. So, a book that is a little bit similar to A Clockwork Orange, but more so because of the themes of free will and dystopian themes, would certainly be George Orwell's 1984. So, this book has been always quite popular. So I'll tell you a little bit about this particular book. So this was published in 1949 by the English writer George Orwell. This was his ninth and final book that he published before he passed away from tuberculosis just a year later after publishing this specific book. It is a dystopian social science fiction novel and it focuses on the themes of totalitarianism mass surveillance and repressive regimentation of people and their behaviours within society. Terms such as thought police, big brother, thought crime are considered coined by George Orwell in the book 1984. This book is also considered on Times 100 Best Books in the English Language from 1923 to 2005. This book has been banned at times um, for its focus on political and social themes, and if you do read this book you will understand why that is quite ironic to be banning such a book. Whilst incredibly successful, this is not George Orwell's first successful book. He previously released a book called Animal Farm that kick-started his massive success as an author. The book was then adapted into a movie in the year, he guessed it, 1984, which starred John Hurt. So this is an exceptionally po popular book and is one that I hope you enjoy. But to give you a little bit of a background to the book, I would like to read to you the back. 1984 has come and gone, but George Orwell's prophetic nightmare's vision in 1949 of the world we were becoming is timelier than ever. 1984 is still the greatest modern classic of negative utopia, a startlingly original and haunting novel that creates an imaginary world that is completely convincing from the first sentence to the last four words. No one can deny the novel's power, its hold on the imaginations of whole generations, or the power of its admonitions, a power that seems to grow, not lessen, with the passage of time. This book is a total of 265 pages, so this is a nice standard read again, just a little longer than the other two books that I've shown you today. You like to try this one? This one is very, very interesting. I think you'll like this one. So would you like to have a look at any more books? You would? Okay. Let's see what else we have. Okay, so the next book that I would like to suggest to you is also featured on Times Magazine's 100 Greatest Novels in the English Language from 1923. And that is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. So this was officially released as a novel in 1951. So this book was initially intended for adult audiences, 
but because the book is from a teenager's perspective, it did attract the attention of teenagers. This book still sells 1 million copies a year to this day, and has in total sold approximately 65 million copies, so this is a very popular book. The themes of this book focus on angst, alienation, and its critical views on superficiality in society. So, The Catcher in the Rye was an initial and continuous success, released in October of that year, and within two weeks, it became the number one on the New York's Times bestsellers. From a literary perspective, it has been hailed and assailed as a novel that broke the mould in terms of focus on character development rather than plot. It is a relatively short read, and it is pretty easy to follow along with. Since its release in the 1950s, some say that the language used in the book is unadventurous, but the reason for that is the main character is a teenager, and J.D. Salinger wanted to be able to give the perspective of a teenager rather than the author's imagination of a teenager. So a lot of the language is quite chatty and personal, and a lot of people shunned that as a theme in the book. However, since the release of this book, it has inspired many authors since to replicate that form of book progression, focusing on character development rather than the plot itself. In 1981, this was the most banned and yet the most taught book in the United States, so this is quite a controversial book, um, which only emphasizes the theme of the book more, which focuses on rebellion and actually encouraged people to go find the book, so much so that there was actually a waiting list in the early 80s to read this book. Salinger, during his lifetime, actually received many um, invitations to turn this into a stage play, TV shows, movies, and I think the likes of Steven Spielberg even asked if he could make that into a movie. However, he declined the request, saying that the voiceover and dialogue and narration of the main character Holden would not be performed successfully in a movie. So, that is why that is used for that reason. So before you decide on taking this book home today or not, I would just like to read to you what it says on the back about this one. The hero narrator of The Catcher in the Rye is an ancient child of 16, a native New Yorker named Holden Caulfield, that through circumstances that tend to preclude adult second-hand description, he leaves his prep school in Pennsylvania and goes underground in New York City for three days. Whilst this doesn't sound like a particularly enticing description of the book, this is certainly a classic, and many consider this a must-read. You like to grab this one, give this one a go too? Excellent. So the last book that I'd like to suggest to you today I think has to be F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. You've heard of this one? Have you read this one? No? Have you seen the movies, perchance? No? Okay, well this has a fantastic backstory to it, as well as being a wonderful book, so I'll tell you all about it. So this was published in 1925 by Fitzgerald, and it is set in 1922 in the Jazz Age on Long Island near New York City, and it takes on a first-person narration from Nick Carraway, who is one of the main characters who interacts with the local millionaires. This book was actually inspired by Fitzgerald's previous romances and discussions with local millionaires. He attended lots of parties prior to the release of this book, 
in 1922. However, with the release of this book, this book actually initially did quite badly. Um, it was considered a commercial disappointment at the time of release, selling about 20,000 copies or less. However, 15 years later, the author passed away and he actually considered his work to be a failure. However, if only he knew what his work was to be considered at a later date. Fitzgerald reminds me a lot of many painters whose work was not desired or admired at the time of them being alive, but after their passing is then admired for the quality that it possesses, and Fitzgerald spits that perfectly. This book actually began picking up popularity during the Second World War, where 155,000 copies of this book were given out to US soldiers overseas. And overall, the troops tended to enjoy this book. And that's where it actually began branching out its success into much broader forms from there. Uh, by 1960, it actually began selling up 100,000 copies a year, and as of 2020, has sold almost 30 million copies, and has been assigned as literature reading in United States high schools, as well as United Kingdom's high schools, and has been translated into 42 languages, as well as three movies. Despite on its initial release being a fairly unpopular book, Peers such as T.S. Eliot and Edith Wharton actually praised this book upon its initial release, which I'm sure was a little bit of reaffirming news to Fitzgerald with this book. Fitzgerald actually didn't enjoy the title of this book, and neither did the uh, publishers of the book. This was a title he just settled on, but he was never happy with the title of the book. He tried titles such as On the Road to West Egg and The Gold-Hatted Gatsby, but he of course settled on this. So this book isn't dystopian, it is not sci-fi, it is not set in the future, but it is most certainly an interesting read. Uh, of course it is set in the 1920s, and it focuses more on themes of race, romance, flapper culture, economic prosperity, and the American dream, as well as rebellious youth. Uh, it's quite a simple story, and I'd like to tell you the back of this one. The Great Gatsby, F. Scott Fitzgerald's third book, stands as the supreme achievement of his career. This exemplary novel of the Jazz Age has been acclaimed by generations of readers. The story of the fabulously wealthy Jay Gatsby and his love for the beautiful Daisy Buchanan, of lavish parties on Long Island at a time when the New York Times noted gin was the national drink. It is an exquisitely crafted tale of America in the 1920s. The Great Gatsby is one of the great classics of 20th century literature, and I most certainly agree. This is an extremely nice, simple read, pretty easy to follow. And this stands at about 180 pages, making this one of the shorter books out of the suggestions today. Uh, this is a very interesting book and does cover the themes mentioned before quite well and focuses on them in fair depth, whilst also remaining as quite an open book to the reader. You like this one? Wonderful! then would you like to take this one also? Excellent. One little thing I'd like to tell you about this um, book that has always interested me is actually just after the release of this book in the 1920s, in 1926 they actually made a movie of the book called The Great Gatsby, and it was a silent picture production. However, it is a lost movie meaning that after its release, the picture was 
lost and has never been restored or recovered since, so this has only ever been seen by the people who saw it then. The only thing that exists to this day of the original 1926 movie is a trailer. However, an additional funny note to that is that Zelda, his wife, as well as F. Scott Fitzgerald, both equally despised the movie production of the book. A little bit of a fun fact for you there. So you like to take that one also? Okay, that's excellent. So, any more books for you today? No? Okay, wonderful selection. I do hope you enjoy them. So you have taken The Great Gatsby, 1984, The Catcher in the Rye, Lord of the Flies, and A Clockwork Orange. Is that all for you today? Okay, so let's try out that library card if you don't mind. I'm just going to take that now and just scan it. Okay, and I'm now just going to make a note of the books that you'll be borrowing today. So you can actually amend the time that you would like to return the books. Obviously you have one, two, three, five books here. So if you would like an extension, so you don't have to feel rushed into reading all the books or rushed to returning them, you can always let us know. And you can hold the books for a while longer. Okay. Grab the first one. I really do hope you enjoy these books. I think they're a really nice introduction into um, several themes um, in English literature. Uh, depending on your perspective, you may find some of them to have a funny side to them, or you might take them as entirely a serious read. And I think that's a very interesting part of books in general. A lot of interpretations can be taken from a variety of different books. But they do all focus on extremely important themes. Mm -hmm. So I figured it might be a nice introduction for you into that sort of book. Okay, and the last one. Okay, and that is all of the books. Now, would you like the maximum amount of time that we can allocate, or would you like a little bit more time? Like a little bit more time, okay. Or should I give you another 60 days? Okay. Okay, well that is all of the books reserved for you. You can now feel free to take these home with you. It has been wonderful having you here at our library today, and we hope to see you again soon. Okay, I really hope that you enjoy the books. Feel free to come back at any time to return them or try out a new book. Okay, take care. Goodbye. <laughs>